little over six months ago, I put out my first impressions video on the flat burn niche modification. And I planned on following that one up pretty quickly with my final take on the mod, its performance, and anything else that popped up along the way. But then all of a sudden, niche themselves, not to be outdone, dropped their own flapper option with no warning on the questionable day of April 1st. So considering that little unique plot twist, it sort of added some time to my general production process, but also in that time, it sort of changed how I wanted to approach this video, because as you'd expect, a lot of people were asking, how do these two flat burr niches compare? But now after some time and experience with both options on my bar, I've got some thoughts on how the modification stands up to the manufacturer. And spoiler alert, their differences are a bit more surface level or simple than you may be expecting. But let's just dive right into it. First, just off the bat, I think it should be said that both of these setups make solid cups of coffee. So the things I'll be talking about today is where these two options tend to deviate from each other, and why I think they more or less seem to be intended for different audiences. Because really outside of a few factors, the Niche Duo and the Flapper Mod aren't all that different in the spirit of their design and installation. In fact, the entire process itself is more or less identical. Drop in the bottom burr, secure the center bolt, drop in the top burr, and install the collar adjustment dial. But when you look a little closer, the burr carriers on the Duo just have a more clean, smooth fitment with a more consistent tolerance. On the other hand, the carriers on the modification have a few imperfections. There's a variance of materials, finish, sweeper designs, and even some sanding had to be done on one that didn't directly fit into my Niche Zero's chamber on the first go around. There's also one very noticeable difference, and that's the burrs. The modification uses 54 and 58 millimeter burrs, while the manufacturer uses 83. And even though looking at them side by side, the difference is downright shocking, in my testing, there are two main things that set them apart. The first is grind speed. Side by side grinding 10 grams of coffee on espresso settings, you can see that even on the fastest setup on the modification, the 54 millimeter Faima burrs, it still takes nearly twice the time to grind through the same amount of coffee. I mean, it just makes sense. Bigger burrs have a bigger chamber that fits in more beans, so naturally it just grinds more beans faster. Also, the Duo does have a higher RPM, spinning at 530, and the Zero does 330 with its stock burrs, so we're somewhere in that ballpark when we have the mod installed. But as I mentioned in my original first impressions video, the burrs, mainly the 58 millimeters, can grind painfully slow, especially when it comes to espresso. A few minutes later. The second difference is the useful grind range. On the burr sets on the mod, the range between fine and coarse is very short, with most brew methods being between 1 and 30, leaving about 20 notches out of play. While on the duo, it reaches a similar grind size closer to 60. So long story short, the larger burrs just gives you more wiggle room for dialing in. And speaking of grinding, I ended up testing six different pairs of burrs, three unimodal and three bimodal, and all but one of which were in-house designs by S-Works. Now I should preface this by saying that not all these burrs that I tested are actually up and available for sale. In fact, only one of the burrs that I tested actually is on our website right now, and that's the 54 millimeters from Faima. All the others may or may not even make it on the website because I think most of them are testers or prototypes. But I can confidently say that each of the sets I used brewed solid filter coffee. The unimodal options though were my favorite for filter coffee because of their higher clarity and more nuanced flavor profiles. But in my testing, none of the unimodals were able to grind fine enough for a traditional espresso. And traditional meaning that they weren't able to hold back 9 bars of pressure for 25 to 30 seconds without getting a little out of hand with the flow rate. But the good news is, all the bimodal burr options actually work for all brew methods across the board, and they actually make some quality cups. But because only one of them is available for sale, that's the one we're going to focus on. The 54mm Faimas are a classic bimodal burr geometry, which produces some variation in grind size, but not nearly as much as the OG conicals. And this means they produce a really nice classic espresso, giving you a good amount of texture and complexity with a bit more of a nuanced finish. Essentially what I would call a real crowd pleaser, black or with milk. Now in that same vein, the Duo at least originally came with two sets of burrs and only one was espresso capable. And the espresso burrs in the Duo produce a similar cup to the Faimas, with more texture, complexity, and balance over the filter burrs that produce less fines and pulls out more brightness, clarity, and nuance. 
but by now I think you're probably starting to notice a pattern in terms of the differences between these two flapper niches. In the end, I think that some folks would argue that the release of the official flapper niche known as the Duo kind of renders the zero flapper modification useless, but personally, I would disagree. I think that the niche duo and the mod sort of fill their own gaps in the market because both have their pros and cons and a fairly distinct, only slightly overlapping audience. The duo of course feels polished and more refined, essentially what you'd expect from a premium full release product. Out of the box, it works exactly how you'd expect without any hitches or caveats. Although in my mind it does feel a little lackluster, like it's missing some of the charm of the original Niche Zero, but if you want my full review of my full thoughts on it, performance and all that fun stuff, you can check out the full review. Although I do think Niche redeemed themselves at least somewhat by beginning to offer the duo with a choice of both or one set of burrs. I mean, considering the pushback they got from the community having to buy two sets of burrs out of the gate, it just makes sense. The modification, on the other hand, isn't perfect, and there are issues with tolerances and fitment and the grind times are very inconsistent from one burr set to another. And personally, I'd love to have just a bit more adjustability in the espresso range, as I often find myself having to grind two to six notches from zero for a more traditional shot. I mean, it's clear that this modification is still working the bugs out, and I think that Sheldon is very upfront about that, it's even on the listing for the item on his website, and he knows that those people who are adopting early, who are getting it and running into issues, he's very quick to assist and communicate, because he knows those are the folks who are going to be ironing it out for those down the line. And I think this dichotomy perfectly represents the types of folks who want either of these options, because it's not down to which one makes better cups, it's even simpler than that. On one side, you've got those who want something polished, something plug and play, no tinkering, no drama, and that's the duo. But there are some folks who enjoy the early adopter experience, hiccups and all, and those are the ones for the mod. Now, personally, I don't really have any insight on what happened and what the conversation was like when the folks over at Niche, either in a boardroom or a conference call or a Zoom meeting, decided to make a flatbird grinder with two sets of flats because I can't help but believe, or at least speculate, had they gone the same route as the modification and made a grinder that had a swappable set of flats and conicals, that it would have been more warmly received by the coffee community. But until then, the mod is what's out there, and I have to say, I don't really mind being a bit of a guinea pig and dealing with some of the possible or maybe even unexpected drawbacks of being an early adopter. And honestly, I prefer the modification purely for the fun of having a true two-in-one best of both worlds option on my bar. But with all that said, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the niche duo up against the flapper modification? And also, which camp do you fall in? Are you camp polished finished product or camp early adopter slash beta tester? And also lastly, how long do you think it'll be before someone drops a production flat burr and conical grinder on the market? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.